So yeah, hi everybody. Um, it's fantastic to be here today. Really, really happy to be here. I'm Martin from Dyson, I'm an engineer there, and we're really, really happy to be supporting this great event. Um, it's great that guys are giving me the chance to tell you a little bit about our company and some of the stuff that we do there. I know everyone's keen to get on and listen to the talk, so I won't go into loads of detail, but do come and find us afterwards or at our little stand, um, and we'll go into some more detail there. So this is my little slide of my agenda. I've got 15 minutes to talk. Uh, I was going to introduce our company, just tell you a bit about who we are, what we do. I guess some of you have seen our products. And then try and give a few top-level examples of how we're using Dyson, how we're using LabVIEW, rather, at Dyson. Uh, and then also a few ways, you know, community is a big part of this event. So a few ways of how we're, how we're working together as teams across the site and how we're trying to do more in that space as well. And finally, I want to make sure I say thank you, but I'll come to that in a minute. Um, yeah, we've got this stand outside. We've got some um, products to show you there. We've got some quite nice, clear, cutaway hair dryers and robots and things, which are nice to look at. Larry's brought along a valve system, which is really nice. And James has got a ADL logger for us to see. We've also got a, a V8 stick vac, which we're raffling off. So there's a charity raffle for that. So if you come along, you can tap and make a contactless donation to Alzheimer's and enter the draw to win a, a stick back, which will get delivered to you. It's a UK plug only, that's the best we can manage. So I probably only want to enter if, you, if you're either in the UK or you want to buy a spare charger. Okay, so who are we? I'll start by getting some friendly faces up on the stage with me. So there's 12 of us that have come to GDEVCon from, uh, from Dyson. Um, We've, we're all from the UK arm of the Global Engineering Department. So our department's probably about 3,000 or so people. Uh, and this us 12 are part of a community of about 50 or so sort of core LabVIEW developers. Uh, some of those have sort of gone down the NICERT path, so we've probably got about half a dozen CLAs and 20 developers or so, something like that, but lots of other people too. Um, so our org chart's pretty big and cumbersome to try and explain here, so I won't do that, but you catch up during the break if you're interested. Basically, we structure it such that global engineering supports um, the separate categories that we have for our product development. So we, we provide all the technical input to those teams. And in terms of, of a company, of how we've grown, this is actually a slide from 2018. So it, it's just <coughs> numbers up to the end of 2018. So there's actually about 12,500 global employees, of, of which about 4,500 are engineers, scientists. And you can see we sort of started on the left uh, axis, on the y-axis rather, is machines sold per year. So you can see in the early 90s we were selling from a standing start, really. And then by the end of 2018, we were doing about 12 million products a year, um, which is pretty impressive. And then hopefully by the end of 2020, our goal is that we'll be doing 30 million products a year. Um, currently in about 80 markets. And what you can also see from the graph is that, you know, initially we're obviously known for vacuum cleaners and that was our only category. But over time, we've introduced more and more categories. So we now have quite a lot of stuff going on in personal care with our hair dryers and such like, and environmental care, as well as obviously the hand dryers that you see around and some sort of early entries into robot and so forth as well. So it's, re it's really exciting time for the company. There's, there's lots of... Really, really nice stuff happening. The other thing that's perhaps not so clear from the slide is the increasing complexity of the products. So you can imagine early on, a, you know, the vacuum cleaner is like a motor and a switch, really, from a, from a controls point of view. But over time, that's really changed quite a lot, and our products have become more and more uh, complex. So now we've got autonomous robots that do real-time room mapping. We've got uh, humidifiers that also connect to the internet and let you control them from the app and all sorts of that, things like that, which has had a massive impact on the testing that we need to do. And then in terms of where we operate, we're all based out of Malmesbury in the UK, um, which is a big site, it's about 4,000 people there. Um, we also have Hullavington, where we, which is an old RAF base, which is where we're doing the car development, as well as small sites in Bristol, where we do app development. And then other places around the world, we have a large centre in Malaysia, Malaysian Development Centre, um, which is really close to our manufacturing site. And then also in Singapore, we have an office over there as well. 
And we also have SAM, which is where we make our digital motors. We make a motor about... A motor pops off the production line once every two seconds, I think. And then more recently, we've added sites in Philippines. We're doing more motor manufacturing there, added in more lines. And we have smaller sites in Silicon Valley, Michigan, and Shanghai. So it's really exciting to be part of this sort of global community. You know, it's, it's lots of nice, exciting travel opportunities and work together with people from different places, which is fantastic, but at the same time, obviously, introduces challenges for how to do that efficiently. And then, so we're really lucky we're in this Malmesbury site. Um, the campus has seen an absolutely enormous amount of growth over the sort of 16 years that I've been there. Um, we've got lots of new large office spaces and bespoke facilities. I guess the thing that I really like about it is it's set in the sort of Wiltshire countryside. So you've got this lovely juxtaposition of sort of, you know, English countryside and then high-tech labs. This picture's of uh, our D9 office, and you can see it's made out of mirrored glass that kind of disappears into the, into the fields, which, is, which I really like. And then in all these spaces, we have spread around the place. We've got a load of sort of design icons that are important to us as a company. So we've got things like a lightning jet hanging in our cafe and uh, a whistle engine that we occasionally spark up in the car park and stuff like that. And the idea is, I mean, these things are nice to look at, but it's kind of just to remind us of you know, what people can achieve when they really put their minds to thinking what might be possible and not be held back by the current status quo. So it's quite an inspiring place to work. Anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about Lavian <coughs> testing at Dyson. So the question is, where, you know, where will you see, if you walk around Dyson, where, where will you see LabVIEW? I think basically everywhere. We see NI hardware and LabVIEW software or test stand and so forth. Pretty much everywhere that you can imagine. So I'll just give you a few examples and then come and have a chat during the break if you're interested. This is about the only slide I can get signed off from, from our research area. <laughs> and it makes us chuckle because on the, in the middle of the plot you can see, of the picture, you can see a, a USB cable going off to the side and it's, that's a pressure mapping device that uh, Miles, who sat somewhere here, has developed. And then on the left they've got a couple of manual manometers. I'm not quite sure why they've, they've got the manual ones as well. But this is kind of really highlights the ethos of Dyson is that... Um, it's, you know, we want to make disruptive like, entrances into new markets in a good way. And the way to do that is we just need to understand the, the physics of what's going on. We really want to understand stuff. And so measuring things and really getting to the heart of what's going on is absolutely crucial to us. And so you'll see engineers you know, really at the heart of the development process, logging their own data and, and acquiring stuff. And so a big part of what the teams do at Dyson is is create applications to be used internally to help those engineers. So for this example, the guy that will be having that pressure box connected will be using probably Mars, and that's an application that we developed out of LabVIEW that probably three or 400 people use around the site. We have similar custom applications to run our sound chambers and so on. And then here, moving on, kind of from the investigative sort of engineer-led in, uh, led testing, we go more towards well, this example here is carpet testing. So this is kind of a coming together of a few different types of testing. So here, if you were in the lab where this was happening, you'd expect to see an engineer trying out some new ideas. So you're sticking bits of styrene on a cleaner head and seeing what effect you know, it has when you change the width of the cleaner head and stuff like that. But you'd also see all our standards testing that we do. So this is actually an IEC test. So it's in a chamber that's running at 23 degrees C. Um, and the test method is defined by the standards. So we run at half a metre a second with a certain acceleration profile and so on and so on. All the test houses that do this testing use the same carpet. It's made on the same loom in the same factory. Everybody uses the same dust. It's from the same part of South America, wherever it comes from. And the, the attention to detail is just incredible. The le every level that you can think of. So these rigs actually are running on C Rios. Actually, it's the old version without the embedded UI. So we've got an NI touch panel, which you can just see, although you can't quite see what's going on. But we log everything like motion resistance, uh, brush bar speed, head pressure, supply voltage, power current, and loads of other stuff that we can't talk about. But it's just a huge amount of stuff there. 
And you'll see the same for each of the categories. So that's an example for floor care. So if you went to performance lab for personal care, you'd see similar setups. So this is uh, testing of the new Air App product going on, which James, uh, James and uh, Neil's team developed. So this will have started off probably in research as like a little Arduino uh, stepper motor control system. And then as it goes through this process towards production, it will get turned into a Dyson test, me test method. And the rig will get upgraded as part of that, probably to run you know, on NI hardware with NI motion or whatever kind of solution we want. More recently, I guess the guys, Neil, will be keen to chat about this. James has written a library first on new UR5 robots, so we're kind of moving more away from stepper motors towards just uh, collaborative robots for this kind of stuff. And another example, sort of in the robot space, we have a Vicon lab where we have a you know, full house set up with um, 3D position system, so we can keep an eye on our robots and test their behaviours. And Shalimar's here from Dyson we should be keen to talk about that. We can track the position of the robot, 0.1 mil at 100 hertz or something like that. So it's, it's quite interesting. And then later on, we get to more of these kind of validation rigs. So this is one from Neil's team again. So this is a robot contaminated rolling road test. So we have, uh, this will be like a few off of this kind of rig. So you can see the robot in the, in the middle there running on some Wilton carpet. And it's got, you might, I guess it's good that it's not conscious because it doesn't know, but it's going to have to do that for weeks. <laughs> um, and it, and, so, and the, the rig will just keep dropping debris in front of it. And, and you know, you'll have to pick it up and it'll either break or it won't. And then <clears throat> Barry and Larry, so... Larry's here and has got a rig on the stand, actually. So this is showing them the sort of multiple off uh, rigs that we run. So this is uh, on the left, let me get this right, we have a bearing life test rig for uh, V9 motors. Right-hand side is bearing. Thank you, Larry. Right-hand side is the bearing life test rig, and you'll get that the wrong way around. And on the left is a 144 station V9 motor life test rig. So you can see it's sort of rack mounted and we can chuck a load of motors in there. Um, Larry's doing some really interesting work on that at the moment. And also those rigs have been upgraded at the moment to run with the RT systems with the embedded UI and the system link control so it makes it easier for us to manage them in Malmesbury from well, yeah, when they're running in Singapore or wherever. So hopefully that gives you a flavour of some of the rigs we've got and some of the sorts of testing that we do. And... Uh, I just wanted to briefly touch on some of the things that we're doing for global collaboration. Actually, we're, we're on a real learning curve with this. So we're, you know, during the event, keen to chat to people and hear your thoughts. Um, we by no means have got to the um, perfect solution, but we found a few things that have worked well for us. So I'd say we've been using the Atlassian suite for quite a few years. So we use Kanban and as part of using Jira and things and Bitbucket or Stash for all our code. More recently, we've got better over the last couple of years of doing pull requests and proper branching workflows in Git. And that's made a massive difference to us, actually, uh, to enable collaboration, both within our teams and then cross teams and cross sites. And it's, it's been really great. So this is an example of actually some work that we're doing in our team at the moment with our colleagues in SEA. So Miles is here and We've been working on this together, and then he's over to Malaysia to get next week to get those guys set up as well. And um, we're really, yeah, we're hoping to do more of that amongst the LabVIEW community here as well. The other thing that's been really successful for us is user groups. Uh, we run user groups every couple of months in the UK, in person, um, where people come and talk about a range of topics. Really interesting. We run it on a rotating sort of uh, chair basis, so everyone gets, everyone who wants to gets a chance to uh, run the meeting. And then, apart as, in addition to that, we also have recently started using Microsoft Teams. The reason we're using Teams rather than Slack is just because that's what our IT guys are supporting, and we're, you know, it's fine. It works really well, but it's great. It's been really, really good for people to answer quick questions that they can get answers from. <coughs> around the world. It's really helped to bring in uh, some of our colleagues over in Malaysia and Singapore into the sort of 
uh, UK group as well. So it's, it's fantastic. It's been very, very helpful for us. And then finally, we've been using, we're using Confluence to host our VI packages. So we create a lot of VI packages for our internal libraries, for our internal people to use, which has worked really well. Cur yeah, currently, we mostly host those on Confluence, which we, we would, you know, we'd like to move towards a hosted repository. But for now, that's been working OK. There's definitely there's more we'd like to do there. Actually, there's quite a nice example here because you can see a guy, my colleague, DS, Yarodin Sheng, has just put up a new version of our Dipsy library and he's been working on that with um, Larry in the UK. And it's just, it works very nicely. We can do global collaboration quite easily. <coughs> so that brings me quite nicely to, the, my, to my last slide because what you can see on the fourth column of that table is our dependencies. And there's a few uh, things there, like JKI REST, GP, G Power Toolkit, JSON Text. And uh, these are all libraries that we're using as part of those packages. And that brings me nicely on to this most important and final slide, which is to say thank you. So, of, oh, I know, I've skipped too fast. So, of course, thank you to NI for creating LabVIEW and the G language, which we love playing with, and all the great hardware, which lets us acquire all the data that we need to develop our rigs. And to the GDevCon organizers for creating this amazing event and having the belief and the determination to do that. Um, I find it really inspiring, actually. And I think it sets an example for us in terms of what can be done where you, when you sort of question the sort of status quo, and that fits really nicely with Dyson's beliefs, beliefs of just you know, going for stuff. And uh, finally, yeah, and most importantly, I guess, to you, the amazing community that we have for LabVIEW. Um, it's amazing, I think, the, the toolkits, the frameworks, the libraries, forum posts that people so willingly share and that we're allowed to, you know, we're able to bake into our test rigs and enable us to do the great stuff that we want to do. It's, yeah, really wonderful. So thank you very much for all of that. It's uh, muchly appreciated. Um, I shall leave it there. I hope everyone has a great few days um, and come see us at the breaks if you fancy a chat. Thank you.